it's starting. So, <clears throat> uh, okay. hello there, mates. Silverpire here today, and today we are playing uh, Savage Worlds. And today, unfortunately, Will is not here, but we have a new player, a new face that just joined recently. Say hello. Uh, how? This here is Irish. Yep, that's uh, that's my moniker. <laughs> Or at least so far as he has told us. It's true. <laughs> so basically, we will get this uh, session started. Let me see if I can get it pulled over. One more. All right. So it's about. A couple of hours before the ending of the world. As we see a semi medieval uh, carnival. There's uh, Mugton, there's people dressed up in medieval clothes and whatnot. Basically, if you've ever been to medieval festival, basically that's what it generally looks like. As we go to what is called the pit. As the camera flies on over, uh, we see your, we see Irish. Uh, uh, can you care to describe your character to the audience? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, Hobnob is a a sizable half orc. You know, he stands. A good six foot seven inches, um, which is not too uncommon for his species. Uh, he's built in a mesomorphic frame and carries the definition that you would expect for someone who professionally fights. Um, his hair is slicked back and kind of cared for nicely. It's a bronzed hue with these kind of white tips that he like cares for uh, very, very, very uh, regularly. Um, facial hair, it's kind of well-trimmed and defined with this handlebar mustache that ends in the same kind of, uh, white-capped tip. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he's, he's got a bit of, he's got some monocles on, too. I imagine that you are currently have your armor equipped, yes? Yeah, he's, he's probably getting dressed up for the, uh, for the occasions. In this corner, we have the one and only half orc around. Uh, and, hold on. And the guy's like pulling up the note, like trying to figure, remember your name. We have Hobnob! Give him a round of applause, folks! And you hear some people um... cheering, yelling, cl uh, clapping. Rushes out, waves at the crowd. And in this corner, your one and only favorite with the heart of gold, the Purple Knight! As you see, the Purple Knight waves and the people are cheering and they're basically, they both are excited. Like, the crowd is excited. They're ecstatic. But basically, uh, the crowd is down this direction and up towards the north. Basically, they're just watching what's going on within the pit. It's not really a pit, it's just more like it's lined out with stones and stuff. Right. They call it a pit because some idiot thought that it was a pit of, you know, waste. Uh, the Purple Knight's gonna approach you. He goes... Hobnob meets him in the center. Kind of the same territorial thing, or not territorial, but ritual thing. Yeah, he goes, I w wish you the best of luck, Hobnob. Same for you, friend. And he kind of extends a hand to shake his before the fight. Yeah, he shakes your hand as well. Alright, back in your corners. Yep. Alright, so pick a number through 1 or 2. 
Uh, let's go with two. One. One. All right. As the both of you rush into the center and start to have the medieval clash of a lifetime, you get beaten up, bruised. You're not, you know, dead, obviously, because it they do kind of hold back, obviously. Right. Because, you know, this is technically a family entertainment center. Yeah, and Hobnob is, is very clearly pulling his punch. Yeah, you are holding your punches because you don't want to actually outright kill the guy, unlike last exactly. time. Exactly. Oh, don't remind him. <laughs> yeah, last time you accidentally knocked someone's head clean off. He probably doesn't like to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't. And I almost you actually got a lawsuit by the person, by the, uh, by the family that, you know, by the family of that person. So that was fun. Right. That was a fun day at the office. <laughs> it's a fun day in the sand pit. <laughs> yeah. So he, he basically throws a punch and you get knocked onto your butt. And he goes, the winner is the Purple Knight. Let's hear it for him, ladies and gentlemen. Hub kind of nods slowly and begins to pick himself up off the ground. Uh, he does lend a hand out and help you up. He takes it. It's a good fight. Same goes for you. I know you were holding back. Don't wanna take any risks, you know. Well, considering the last time. Right, yeah, I think I'm gonna <clears throat> gonna go wrap up my hands. You gotta as soon as that conversation begins. Well, <laughs> he's like trying. I felt the p farewell. As he farewell. like leaves the uh, uh stady at the uh, pit with triumph. All right, so you're kind of at the medieval festival. Some people are like looking at the Black Knight, air quote, and they're like, "Oh my God, I want to be just like you when I get older." And that kind of crap. Hob kind of enjoys, and maybe like the one fan of his that's sitting in the crowd with horribly painted skin and fake tusks. He probably signs a few. Yeah, there are a few fans. Of yours that are around. Just kind of nod and smiles. Thanks for coming to the show. All of But yeah, you see some jousting tournaments and whatnot, and you notice that your armor did get scuffled up in that fight, so you went over to the state, basically to the quote unquote medieval forge to clean it up. Yep. Um, roll me a notice roll while you're doing the work. Notice. Oof, I've never done that one before. It's not good. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming no modifiers. Yeah, uh, zero modifiers, and I'm going to say the difficulty would be a five because you're banging metal. All right. Holy crap, success, really. You succeed. As you are kind of bumping out the dents in the... And you're leaving the scratches in a few places here and there because, you know, you have to get a certain wax for that. Uh, right. You hear also, the blacksmith please. coming up and he goes, Hey, what are you doing? Oh, bro. Sorry, Charlie. I was just working on my armor. Fight me. <sighs> I swear, every time you get in a fight, you get that piece of armor destroyed more and more. Yeah, you know, kind of serving its purpose. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, this ain't in medieval times anymore. 
Right. Yeah, I still enjoy it. Hey. Some people do, some people don't. Can't much find a, an occupation for people like me. Well, considering that people used to be warriors and whatnot, I'm not surprised. Right. This is the closest thing we've got. Yep. Um, I'll get out of your hair. Just gonna... Yeah, just make sure you clean up what you do. See ya, Charlie. See ya. Um, as you are talking, were talking to Charlie, you do would notice this kind of flying in the uh, upper atmosphere. You see what looks to be a streak of fire fly across the sky. What the? I don't remember us getting new fireworks in. Uh, do you, do you talk to Charlie about this? Yeah, I mean, as he's kind of in the vicinity, he would mention it a lot. Uh, we don't have any f new fireworks. We're not supposed to get any until next week. Well, then, what is that? And he points up at Um, asteroid? A satellite, maybe? That's pretty bright. Uh, it oh, does no. kind of fly overhead, but it doesn't hit anywhere near the medieval festival. It kind of goes over. It goes... And there it goes. <laughs> Did you make it work? Uh, well, looks like it was heading towards Ivory Town. Nope, everything's alright. Yeah, it should be fine. Yeah, I guess so. Good. Anyway, I'll see you later, Charlie. At that point, I'm assuming he would have finished up with his armor. Yeah, you finish up with your armor, and you clean it up a bit, uh, of course. All right. Got to mops off some of the uh, tables or whatnot. Yeah. Um, um, I would also say that at, at kind of like around go this time of period, like some people are leaving to get head on home and whatnot, so it's more mm -hmm. or less empty. Yeah, Bob's packing some things up, throwing them in like a duffel bag and whatnot, and throwing it over his shoulder. Uh, you know, he pulls like a locket out of his uh out of his uh lockers, <laughs> and. Kind of looks over it for a few minutes and then closes it and puts it in the uh, sh inside shirt pocket. Um, and eventually, his curiosity does kind of get the better of him because he's off the clock at this point. I, I... So, your curiosity gets the best of you in this moment? Yeah, I would say about now he would kind of be thinking back on that, on that flash of light going towards Ivory Town. He'd be like, I, got, I feel he'll probably head that way just to see what he can't see. Well, that's a very long drive from where you're at. That's like a three-hour drive. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, so that's not exactly... You could just walk over there and get there. Right. Then, yeah, no. It'll just kind of be in the back of his head bothering him as he, uh, as he gets ready to head home. Um... As you are heading home, as you take the normal road, uh, you pass by one of the more... Uh, you pass by what looks to be a store that kind of sells, like, TVs and whatnot. And this is about 30 minutes. This is about, like, 15 minutes in, into your walk, and they're basically talking about the meteorite that just possibly crashed near Ivory Lake. He's listening in. He doesn't really... Uh, basically, it has the subtitles on. They're basically saying, uh, please be careful if you're within the area, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. Okay. They're not saying, like, it's dangerous or anything. They haven't... They haven't heard a word from Ivory Town, essentially. 
<laughs> As you uh, get home, I'm going to say it takes about uh, 20 minutes for t for a 20 minute walk to for between work and home. Okay, hey, pretty good residence. You're not far from your job. Yeah. I'm just going to say that you have like a one story house. I was going to give him something so much shittier, but okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm being nice, essentially. Right. I was going to be like, you have a shoebox apartment. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want me to give him a shoebox apartment, I can. We can go. We can we can do with the house. Yeah, we'll do the house. But yeah, your house is uh, it's all right. It's it's not the greatest, but it's it's your home. In fun fact, I'm gonna say that your grandfather owned this place and he left the house to you. Okay, cool. He kind of, uh, when he walks in, he sees that, you know, a, a portrait of his grandfather. It's kind of on the, uh, on one of the lamp desks or Dave tables or whatnot. Yeah. He uh, just kind of corrects as it's, as it's kind of adjourned. Yeah. He says, had a, had a good day, Grandpa. It was nice. But yeah, your grandpa, we... but yeah, your grandpa's photo is just kind of hanging. Yeah, he's talking to it more or less as he walks in and sets down his equipment and put, hangs up his boxing gloves. I didn't win again, but I tried. <sighs> <laughs> do or do not. There is no try. <laughs> That's what the portrait says, and he loses his shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says at the bottom what your grandpa always said to you whenever you lost the battle. Or, or when right. you say that you tried your best. And at that moment, he kind of just shakes his head. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> but yeah, I'm gonna say that there's some uh some small stuff uh, kind of messed about, mainly because you do live alone. Ooh, so he would definitely notice if somebody moved some stuff. Yes, there's nothing has been disturbed. As far as you okay. notice. Yeah, eventually just kind of goes about, and probably opens up the fridge and gets something cold to drink and takes a seat on his couch. So, about 40 minutes passes after, you know, you had your meal and whatnot. It's way past night at this point. Like, it's, like, imagine, uh, this is, like, uh, around spring break, right? This right. is Friday before the beginning of spring break. So, like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically, there's just, it, it's a little dark outside, essentially. And he's, he's laying on his couch, like, completely KO'd. He spilled his drink at this point, it was kind of sitting on his stomach, and he fell asleep, and his glasses are kind of crooked on his face. Uh, do you have the TV on in the background? He uh, does. Uh, you hear the emergency uh, warning sent. Uh, signal coming from your television. <laughs> what? As you hear, we're sorry to interrupt this broadcast to bring you breaking news. Earlier today, a nuclear meltdown has happened in Ivory Town. What? We have captured the four communist terrorists. Tied to this tragedy, they are to be invest. They are to be interrogated and executed by tomorrow morning. You see uh, four photos: uh, Kaganaki, clear eye, 
a slime folk named Red, a dark elf a teenager named Loa Clearai, and what looks to be a human named Alec Yakamoto. These are the most protagonist-looking people I've ever seen. I'm joking. <laughs> um, yeah, he's just paying close attention. But basically, and they said, they're no conspirator, Crazy Jack, and they show a photo of Crazy Jack in a helicopter with a, with basically a log sticking straight into his chest. Basically, imagine if a helicopter crashed in a sharp in a uh, tree basically stabbed him right in the heart area. Right. I, I got that. <laughs> That's horrifying. Yeah. Anyways, but yeah. You're like, why is this a thing? But then you feel your house rumble and shake. Kind of falls off the couch at that moment. <laughs> what, what's that? Like you see the glass vibrate to an extent, but it doesn't break. Okay. He probably stops um like a portrait of his grandfather from hitting the ground. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, that actually almost falls off the wall. Thanks to your uh quick says you managed to catch it. What's happening? Uh, you could probably figure that it had to do with something with that nuclear detonation with the explosion. Oh, they mentioned an explosion? Yeah, they mentioned an explosion. My bad. That's okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, at that point, he'd probably be, you know, getting his skimmies on and getting ready, like pulling some, some food and other important memorabilia from his house, pulls the portrait off the wall of his grandfather and dresses himself, picks okay. up the duffel bag. Okay, I'm going to say that this is going to take you some time. 100%, yeah. He has to, like, as soon as he heard that there is a national event happening, he, he has to go and get things so that he can head out. Yeah. And the TV's still on in the background. As you are packing up, about mm, an hour, maybe two, while you're packing all your stuff and getting your gear to all together, you hear about a riot within the town that's nearby. Oh, God. I've got to hurry. Like, you see how, like, you see basically news coverage of from a helicopter looking down at the city and it's like it is covered in flames here and there. There is cars flipped over, there are grenades, explosives going off in the streets, gunfire and etc. It is absolute chaos going on. It's just like Chicago all over again. <laughs> But yeah, essentially, whatever is going on, something, it does not seem right. Yeah, I mean, he's still, he's still, I, at this point, he's gotten as much as he can, putting it under arm as he can uh, run. I, does he have a car, would you say? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say can no. Can you afford that? Because okay. you can't afford a car. I gave you a nice house, so I'm going to say wasn't able to afford a car. See, this is why I wanted that shoebox. Could have had a shitty mobile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's got like a horrible moped or something. He's got like a bike. But yeah, as you basically run out, you see people are, they are running, they are panicking, they are terrified. Um, so is there a place that is known to go if there was an emergency event well occurring. as far as you know no 
Town Hall is not doing its job. <laughs> Pay taxes for nothing. Actually, do you have a cell phone on your character? Uh, I didn't tag one in there. I think he might have one. I'm just going to say, hypothetically, you have one. Right. Just for, just for this scene to make sense. Okay. I will put that in. Uh, you take a look at your phone. There is no cell service. Oh, God. This is really bad. Yeah, and it's about to get worse. Yeah, he begins, you know, jogging. <laughs> but he's a fairly, you know, physical person. It's his job. So he, he yeah. starts trekking in a direction out of town, more or less. As you are trekking uh, out of town, you're going to notice something real quick. Do I roll note? No, this is pretty easy to spot. So I'm not going to make it <laughs> difficult. You see a man basically... Like, he's like... Crawling away from something. And you see a tank being flown right at him. Okay, yeah. No, he... Um, a legitimate... He definitely hopped off. Army up. tank. Like, you instantly drop as the tank hit... Squishes the guy. It keeps... It starts... It basically bounces off. It hits into a building. Oh, I was going to say, can I try and grab the guy using some kind you of... You know, the guy, like, you don't know what through that, but tanks normally don't do that. Right. That sends I mean, a red yeah. freaking flag. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, seeing somebody get turned into jelly is probably something that your average person would not encounter. So at that moment, he probably kind of like... <gasps> tries not to vomit and then ducks over into some brush to get out of the way. Yeah. Because shit is getting thrown, apparently. Uh, roll me a stealth roll as you do that. Okay. Stealth. More checks, huh? Me, uh... In fact, the oh difficulty God, on that stealth? should be a two since one, darkness, two, cover. I can't find stealth! <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh no, I found yeah, uh, roll me a stealth. Difficulty of two. Because you got a lot going for you. Alright, and with two rises. Nice. Alright, as you go behind the bush to like, like you're trying to like, you're like, or, Ugh, like you are sickened by that sight. Yep. He's holding the portrait close to him on the ground. As you <laughs> walk back to where that tank was flown by, um, you see something you never thought you would see. CeeLo Green? I'm just... <laughs> Basically, it's in artwork. Oh. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> yeah, imagine it having... Basically, imagine a centaur with a spider abdomen with four spider legs, four human arms and hands with claws at the end of their fingers, and... A human-shaped face with spider eyes and spider fangs to replace their eyes and mouth. This is um, this is a very modernized setting, and but we have there's are like fantasy creatures something that is still commonplace, or are they like very oh, yeah. rare to they see? They are anymore? very, they are commonplace, but you have never seen that creature. Right, that is a that is a very strange thing. I like, if you saw that, I, w I, I question your fantasy scenario. Yeah, he just ducks lower, not wanting to get that thing's attention and trying to get away from it as quietly it as he can. It doesn't spot you, obviously, but it looks strong. Like, compared to a normal human, 
this would be a Hama Ali on steroids. So about equivalent to a half orc. Okay, I fight it. <laughs> like think of like a half orc if it were combined with a super mutant from uh, Fallout. Right. Okay. Cool. As far as its strength wise. Uh, I don't think he would know much about this creature in the sense of, you know, or he'd be considering much about it, but I think he would be trying to get away from it. <laughs> yeah, you definitely like, I'm getting out of here. Yeah. Portrait under arm, duffel bag, shoes running into the woods. <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> All right, roll me a uh, vigor. Then an agility. I can do this if I find this thing there. Uh, any modifiers for being a half orc <laughs> or uh, being a, a, a boxer? I'll say right. with your vigor, I'll give you a modifier of two. Okay. Uh, difficulty of what? I'm going to say difficulty of zero because you're just running away. How? How did I manage that? Oh, I rolled a natural one. Oof. Alright, as you're running, you're oh. like, you're like trying, you're holding so tightly, you're like, like, you're breathing really, really hard. Now I need I like to trip roll. over something. <laughs> yeah, you trip like over a few branches and whatnot here and there. Makes sense, he's scared. Now what am I rolling? Uh, roll in agility because you're about to fall into something. Just this day does not get any better. <laughs> nope, because you didn't see this until the last second as you start feeling yourself fall into a pit. Uh, same modifiers with this one. Uh, same modifier, but the difficulty is a six. Here's a success. Alright, you successfully managed to not get yourself completely hurt. But you do slide, you do fall into it, unfortunately. He kind of rolls and tumbles, but notices this moment and corrects himself just enough to where he doesn't injure himself. Yeah. It's not a very deep hole. It's deep enough to, you know, contain a person and make sure that they weren't able to climb out. You hear footsteps. Coming from inside of the hole? Not coming from inside the hole, from atop the hole. Okay, are there any, like, is there any tunneling inside of the hole? No. Hmm, can I try it and climb the hole? You hear, well, 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 I didn't think that that would actually work. Such a shame on how easily one can get captured. What? Listen, man, shit is going down. It's the worst time to pull a prank on somebody. God, there's a giant fucking spider. <laughs> just to let you know. <laughs> Who said that this was a prank? Well, I would hope that you're pulling a prank if you're gonna do something this stupid. When, when we're under attack. Oh, I know we're under attack. As you see, what looks to be a hooded man wearing a white mask. After all, now it's our time to gain control. Oh god, the crazies are going out early tonight. Grandpa was right. He goes, I'm sorry about this, as you see him pull out what looks to be a, uh, Glock. So, hey. Hey. sleep tight, as you get shot no. in the neck with a tranquilizer. <laughs> you wake 
woke up and you find yourself without your armor nor your boxing gloves here. Well, at least have the portrait of Grampy. <laughs> uh, no, all of your uh, your portrait of Grampy is like it's like on a shelf over here, as well as your uh, armor and weapons, right? And most of your gear. Basically, they left you on arm. Yeah, he's kind of just slowly coming to consciousness. All right. Starts to groggily wake. But yeah, as you wake up, you see what looks to be other people in what looks to be a, a very wide uh, prison cell, which you just now notice is a, a an old fridge. Uh, okay. Basically, this door over here is closed. As you're basically locked in. As you see what looks to be two figures wearing white masks. Both here and here. They're outside of the cage. Are they armed? Oh yeah. My equipment is over over there. Is that yes? That's the... It's over by the, this guy who's kind of basically kind of leaning against the wall. Right. Okay. But yeah, you see I, uh, uh, what well, looks to be a guy literally hanging on chains against this wall. Right here. Is he dead? No, he's alive. And you see what looks to be uh, four people here. Uh, you see what looks to be a kobold, uh, a human woman, an elven uh, man. It looks to be a half elven uh, teenager. Yeah, he's just kind of looking about now, fully like gaining some consciousness back. Uh, and he's very confused and very upset. He but goes, as soon as he notices these people in masks like that's when he kind of looks over at him. He, goes, and he gets ah, up and he puts his hands on the body. Good. <laughs> Listen, man, this is... Just, what are you doing? Let me out of here. What we are doing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you would have to ask the boss that. Where well, can you bring him in? Oh, no, no, no. We bring him to you. We bring you to him. <laughs> kind of slowly lets go of the bars, just thinking, and kind of backs away from that person. Uh, he's basically sitting at this table over here. Right. Uh, this guy is basically unconscious. He's uh, he's looking around the room, and are all of these other people awake? Yeah, they're all awake. Uh, the cobalt looks at you, and it goes, You too? Yeah, I guess. They, uh, they drank you as well. No, I ran from the city, and, uh, well, it got captured in one of their, uh, quote-unquote patrols. <laughs> no. Uh. Name's Iggy. I'm, I'm Hobnob. Kind of extends a hand. Uh, he'll shake it. How long have you been here? A few hours, maybe. Oh, so this is all recent. Yes. Hmm. I'm assuming no one has tried to escape yet. Right. I mean, he's kind of whispering though. He points over to the guard that has a M16. <laughs> they have loaded guns, and even then, they have a machine gunner, a machine gunner outside in the front. <laughs> right. We could try something later. Maybe. Got 
talk to everyone else first. You noticed anything strange? Maybe exploitable? Nope. Hmm. Uh, not that I have I noticed. I just recently got woken up five minutes ago. <laughs> I'll let you know if nods. I find anything. Thank you. He kind of walks over to introduce himself to everyone else, or at least get them to introduce themselves. The elf just looks at you with a evil glare. He is a high elf. And I say, he says, Orcish scum, I'm willing to bet that this was all your fault. I, I just want to say, can we put aside, like, prejudice for now? Being imprisoned, and the world has come to an end. It's the worst time to be racist. Oh, worst time to be racist then, eh? Well, you should have said that when you destroyed my homeland. Not me. That is maybe some orcs, some bad apples, you know, some, some green skinned rowdy boys might have done that, but not me. What's your name? He I... extends a hand. Instant. Shh. No shit. N no shit. I ain't telling you my name, no shit. Oh. Okay. Gonna be, uh, non-cooperative. That's gonna keep us alive, definitely. He turns over to the person right <laughs> Hello. Uh, who do you turn to? This one, right there. Uh, they just, uh, they just kind of have their, they're just basically chilling out. You seem a bit relaxed for our current situation. I'm assuming you've been here the longest. Uh, he doesn't respond. This is a bad start. It's a very bad start. <laughs> um, he then turns uh, the lady to right this next person. To him and goes, oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. He doesn't, uh, he can't hear. He's deaf. Oh. Uh, my apologies, I didn't, I didn't know. Uh, how long have you been here? A few hours, same as us? Uh... Yeah. Right. I used to work at a bar, but, uh, uh, well, let's just say I thought this place was unoccupied and they were setting up sandbags in the middle. Wait, you, you know this place? You used to work here? No, I worked at a different bar. Uh, I worked at uh, Sasha's and oh. Molly's. I see. It's a good joint. It is. It's a good, it's a good place. They used to uh, go but, there after work. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this here is just my friend. He's, uh... Like I said, he's he's deaf. He he can't hear you. Especially right. Especially without his hearing aid, as she points out to the hearing aid on the shelf. Would you uh? Would you know anything about him? And he points over to the guy who's chained up on the wall. Uh, no idea. Right. Well, shit. Listen. I'm contemplating. Hey, which, maybe. You, great skin. Slowly turns around. Hi. To the corner, over there. So we have regulated spots. Right now, you ha want to talk to the boss? He's going to see you now. All right. He slowly kind of paces over there, not breaking eye contact with the person. Basically, he's going to drag you out and drag you into the office. Uh, give me a second. So that way I can hide. Uh, well, I guess I'll show you the office. 
I will say 100% though, he, he probably doesn't like, you know, resist, but he isn't dragged. <laughs> he is 100% orc, so he walks. <laughs> well, yeah, he just puts you in the, uh, a metal chair and he cuffs you to that chair. Okay. He goes, here he is, boss, the new guy, as he uh, walks out of the room. Kind of looks at the handcuffs and says, I guess you're not partial to uh, handshakes. Good to know. Uh, you see a man wearing uh, a white mask, gray hoodie. Uh, he seems to be wearing what looks to be a bulletproof vest. He goes, ah, now then, welcome to my little sanctuary. Apocalypse bunker. No, no, no. This is uh, a joint that I used to go to a lot. So please, sit down and relax. He kind of looks at himself already sitting and chained up. Well, uh, I'm doing one of those things. <laughs> I su highly suggest you relax. Now then. I'll try. <laughs> we've already checked you for physical injuries such as bites and scratches. None so far, which is good news for you. Yeah, I, I haven't recently been bitten by anyone. Weird no, thing to check no, for. No, we weren't looking for if you got bitten by a person. We were checking for the giant spider bite. Giant spiders. What? And it takes some kind of a moment to realize and remember that thing. Yeah, you oh. remember that creature very well. Right. Yeah, that thing. Yes. As one of my men unfortunately found out, they spread through bites. Essentially, if you get bit about an hour, maybe a four at most, depending on how long you have in your health conditions and whatnot, they burst out of your chest. So, why are you capturing people? <laughs> For leverage, my friend. For leverage. Leverage in the end of the world. Seems pretty useless. He goes, oh, it's not useless. In fact, it's got me such great information so far. <sighs> Listen, pal. You're not important to anyone. Last person that cared about me died 20 years ago. You see, I need... Mm, what's the word? As he just starts tapping his chin. I need people that know how to. Say farm. Grow. And fight. Yeah. I'm a botanist. Pretty good at planting things. But you see. The thing is. Is that you would try to either. A. Fight us. Or B. Be against us. You know, maybe if you tried some better indoctrination policies, you might not have a. Now, as you see my security guard, as he points over to the security guard onto your uh, left hand side. He's willing to kill anyone that comes in here. Especially two children that I've managed to capture. You're just trying to make yourself, uh, just the meanest bastard here, aren't you? 
Oh, you don't even know the half of it. Don't think I want to know. What do you want? You see, I have found out information of a small log cabin in the middle of the woods. The first four were... Th the first four captives were mm, a little hesitant to share the information at first until I threatened three of them with a shot in the head. I can't believe that military guy cracked up. Uh, by the way, there is a window within this room and it's ba it's basically morning at this point. You have no idea how long you were out. Hello? Irish? Irish? Hello? Hello? Yes, uh, do you look outside the window? Um, hesitantly. <laughs> uh, you see it's kinda towards dawn. Okay, looks back. Now, then. Uh, he goes, now then. If you excuse me for a moment. He goes, what do you want? He's being stubborn. Then just get food and water. Sorry about that. Apparently my CEO is incompetent. Surprising. Such a well-managed industry you got here. Again, you don't know the half of it. Right. Listen, is this the part where you offer me something for helping you? Like, uh, freedom, maybe? No, this is the part where we torture you. Well, that's not as enjoyable as freedom. He goes, Hold on. What? That bastard. Okay, he's a bit, he's a bit confused. Uh, you do uh, see what looks to be... Do uh, you look at where his uh, ear is? Earpiece. Yeah, you see what looks to be an earpiece with a an attachable microphone, and he has he's turned it off when he's talking to you, but he has right. But he turns it on when he's talking, uh, when he's basically talking back to someone. You're pretty sure it might be someone or some person. Uh, I guess I'll try and listen in with my sharpened orcish ears, I guess. <laughs> I don't think I can All hear right, too well. Roll though. me a notice roll. Okay. Okay. Any modifiers? I'm assuming not. Yeah, no. No modifier. Difficulty? I'm going to say difficulty is going to be a 7. Oh, just one? Damn, I was really close. Yeah, as you try to listen in and strain your ears to listen in on that conversation, you can't hear a word. There's a few words that come across, but you don't hear all, all the whole conversation. Right. Uh, what kind of words can I grasp? You hear... Uh, 
you hear them basically arguing with what looks to say on to be an elderly man saying that it's calling themselves he the heroes you hear yeah. proper and bandit and then you hear a shotgun sound Okay. Yeah. He goes, Great, now it looks like I have to kill a CO. So, tell you what. I'm gonna. He goes. He starts listening back in. He goes, Hold one moment. And tell me everything you hear once I get this fella out of here. He presses a button. The guard that basically brought you in here uncuffs you and basically starts dragging you back. He, uh, he walks back here. Yeah. Uh, you walk back in. He locks the cage behind you. On, on the way back in, do I notice any any kind of means of escape? Uh, one. And I'm, I'll show you. Okay. Basically, you saw this entire room with all the guards and whatnot. Four of them seem to be having a party. But you see what looks to be a couple of gunners keeping a watch on that front door. Okay. And you see this guy coming coming in and basically giving a report to uh, t talking to this guy occasionally to go back outside. So we're heavily outnumbered. <laughs> yeah. So even if you were able to get out of this jail cell and take on these two guards, you have no chance against these guys. Right. Because they are f wearing full <laughs> bulletproof vests. They have guns out of the wazoo. So yeah, they are heavily armed. And he goes, all right, orc fella, back in the corner. Yeah. Kind of slowly walks back towards the corner. As he was, um, as we were walking back into the cell together, do I notice anything on him? Any equipment that's kind of loose? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, then he would just walk on in. Uh, you see him open the cage, and you see the other guy open the cage, all the way in the corner. As he points his rifle to you, he goes, It's five of y'all's lucky day. The five of you are getting out of here. One of you is staying. Mm. Hob has a feeling <laughs> who that one is. Uh, you see there's one basically uncouple this guy and he just basically collapses on the ground. Hob will help him up as soon as he hits the ground. Alright. And you see this guy basically start to grab these people and go to a different room. Spacey in here now. And the one uh, backs out. Locked it. Um, I have a question for you. Was he the only one in there uh, for that? At that moment. But uh, he comes um. quickly back. Uh, these uh, four unmasked individuals and unarmed, 
they still have their armor. They they don't have their armor on. They don't have their mask on, nor any weapons or means of escape. After you oh, heard okay. what sounded been uh, some shouting in the main room, basically get drawn in there with you. Yes, I'm the uh, default old eldest person here, since the rest of them were taken away. They're like, fuck! <sighs> Who blew our cover? They're like, they're like discussing among each other. You could ask one of them what they're talking about. Uh, I mean, they're kind of huddled in a in a circle, uh, so he has he doesn't really feel the need to have to just rush on in there and ask him yet. But he's assuming that eventually they'll they'll converse about something. Basically, uh, you could basically overhear that they were uh, they didn't like the whole organization or the guy that's currently in charge basically these guys were defectors okay you only notice that there's four of them oddly enough there is a half work among them ah. um I mean, I guess, yeah, as soon as he'd notice someone of his ilk, he'd say in Orcish, What's up, mudblood? He doesn't notice because he doesn't know that. A, a half orc that don't know Orcish? Yeah. Bring shame. <laughs> he goes, You talking to me? Yeah, I guess. Uh, what brought you guys here? We're defectors, essentially. Hmm. Yeah. Guess that's some go to plan. No, but basically, one of the scouts that went over to Dan Anderson's place. Or little cabin in the woods. Managed to run off and hide. And heard the entire conference interrogation between him and one of our former operatives. Not this one. I... He goes, well. so yeah. And basically the ruckus that he was hearing in there was essentially a witch hunt and... He points over to what looks to be a human male who looks like to be in his uh, mid 40s. And he cracked. Always got one. Yep. So, there's this entire operation. Seems pretty well developed, and this cat just sprung up at the end of the world. Are y'all a new corporation? No, we call ourselves the Mast, and I'll type it in, uh, real quick for you. Yeah. He goes, and we were, well, at least some of us were, uh, patrons at this bar. We kind of knew each other for a while, or at least I thought we did. <laughs> then Mark Lake, the oh-so-brilliant 
leader of the mask thought it was a great idea as soon as the world ended was to basically kill every quote unquote bandit on site because they ruined the United States, the American soil and stuff like that. That is without a doubt the dumbest I've ever heard of. Oh, and it gets better. Supposedly, he was so crazy, and believe it or not, he owned this place before the whole thing even happened. So he's got a bit of escape tunnel. He's that paranoid. Where, where, is, where is that? In his office. Sort of a place. Um, I mean, you're familiar with the layout of this place. You know anything else that might be useful? Yeah, that we're being listed on to. As you see, the guy just basically start to wave. Oh, fuck. Well, I, I, I was kind of assuming that uh, Hobnob was kind of whispering this to him. Because there is someone right there. Yeah, he heard it. Kind of looks over and gives him a scowl. He goes, I got really good ears! Good for you. Hang on to those. He turns back over the half work. Well, that's one plan, down the shitter. Not if that, uh, not if that, well, now, well, and it's going get just worse, because they came up with a, so much of a brilliant plan. I can only imagine things can get better from here on. Remember those guys that were just in here? Yeah. They're all going to die. Why? Why? I don't know. Something about paying them back in blood or something like that. Right. There's not a damn thing we can do. I mean, you could try to listen in onto the conversation that's going on in there if you want. Uh, he, can, he can definitely try that, but I think that wall is thick as hell. <laughs> My notice checks have not been the best. He kind of um, nonchalantly saunters over as if he was off to all these new people so that he doesn't rise suspicion. Uh, but as soon as he gets over there, he kind of gestures towards this fella. and then... He's just leaning against the wall. Right, he's more or less making fake conversation with him just so that he can hear the other side of this. Alright, roll me a notice roll, difficulty of 10. That's not surprising. Ah, so... Yeah, you can't hear anything. Uh, at that he cobblestone kind of leans against it nonchalantly uh, and as he does so he tries to loosen a brick in the wall so that he can get a bit of a closer ear to their thing uh, it's not actually cobblestone oh son of a bitch it's, it's like, concrete yeah it's concrete okay <laughs> I cannot do anything. He goes, you want to know what's going on in there? That's what this fellow said? Yeah. And he, he goes, no. He goes, he goes, Operation Bloodshed. And 
he goes, sick bastards. <laughs> Basically, they're gonna dress up them like us without the armor nor weapons and give them four vehicles and put C4 within those vehicles. Then they are sending a sniper and demolitions expert. Basically, they're gonna make the camp that basically shot our former CO into killing their prisoners. I've got a question for you. Yeah? You, uh, you used to work for these people. So, do you know their scheduling for these guys? When they're switching shifts or taking breaks? Uh, yeah, Hello? but they usually get a guy in here within less than a couple of minutes. Usually that's, one guy goes out, they leave one guy in. Right. I just need, I need a space, a gap of time where there's no one in here. And you know that time? No. Unfortunately. I've been in here. But no. I've been Shit. in here. Some uh, guy named Tank. I, I, Tango's been in here. And he's the sniper. And a damn good one. Yeah, nods, kind of lessons. So at least what he can get out of that is that there is a time where they're, they're switching schedules, where they're changing shifts and people are taking on the job, but there's like a minute in between. He goes, hey, uh, they, you see this guy nod, uh, go towards that door and walk out. Right. I'm assuming this guy is staring at us. Yep, he's watching y'all very carefully. Uh, if you could distract him, you might have a shot at something. Uh, about 30 seconds, about, about a minute, and then you see another guy come in and take the place where that last guy was at. Okay, that's enough time to do something, though, thankfully. Yeah, but they take on the entire bar? No, but I mean to get us something from that desk over there. Specifically. It's more or less what he's thinking. Uh, and basically what he's concocting in his head is that when that fella heads out for his break... Uh, and uh, that that's fellow the is the that came in. I, know, I know, but what he's saying is that when someone is taking a break and sw switching schedules, uh, specifically on this side of the bar, or on this side of the cage, um, he can have someone distract this person for a small amount of time, whoever is scheduled to be at that, that point, and then he can try and grab something from that shelf. Yep. Uh, by the way, you see that guy? It's... Uh, walking out. Right. He he wants some. He wants it when this fella is leaving. That's kind of what he's waiting for. He he looks at you and he says, "I ain't leaving. I got an eight-hour shift." It, the dude there looks at him. Yeah, he says. Says that. Yeah, he says that out loud. Is he telepathic? <laughs> no, he goes. You looking at your stuff? You ain't gonna get it. Here, I'm looking at my grandfather's portrait. I ain't giving you the grandfather portrait. As a matter of fact, you see him grab it, and he lets go of it. Okay. It drops on the floor. He goes, and he pulls out his pistol. So, now... Then, 
What do you think of this about your grandfather's portrait as he shoots your grandfather's portrait, destroying it? Uh, uh, thank you. Wasting your ammunition, you fucking fool. <laughs> and he laughs at him. He laughs at him as soon as he starts doing it. He goes, <laughs> we got plenty of ammo. Good for you. Have fun firing off a loaded firearm in this enclosed space. You're a damn idiot. Piece of paper ain't my grandfather, you foolish boy. Uh, you see someone come in what looks to be a flamethrower attached to their back. Okay. <laughs> he's just leaning, he's just basically... It's just another person taking up their schedule? Yeah. He doesn't mind. Just kind of sits back there, leaned up against the wall, but arms see, crossed. Uh, other, instead of a white mask, he's wearing what looks to be a white uh, gas mask. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's paying attention, but he's he's more or less just he waiting. Got... He's being patient. I think your friend's having a, a schizophrenic. No, uh, he's just happening. talking while he has that mask on. Okay. Basically, he says, if y'all try to do anything funny, he's going to burn y'all. Uh, do you have to reiterate yourself every time someone new takes the shift? I think we all fucking get that. Uh, you see the guy, uh, the guy with the flamethrower, uh, pulls out the rod, and he goes, rrr, rrr. "Am I a joke to you?" <laughs> you have to speak for him. <laughs> no, I'm translating. No, I, I'm hoping that his friend has to say that every time because it'll be even better. <laughs> like his friend has to speak for him. He doesn't say what that one is. That is, that is the saddest ventriloquist act I have ever seen. I hate to say what that one was. I can only assume it was something insulting. No, more about the sexual variety. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, he's a little weird. Yeah, he's, I don't get that, but all right. What's your name? You seem the most talkative. Most people call me talky. That, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> but my real name's Bob. Pleasure to meet you, Bob. Bob. Ah, uh -huh, very funny. You're very clever. No, I mean, my name is, is Hobnob. Oh, I thought you were... It's all to my name. Yeah, yeah, it's, all, it's very similar. <laughs> well, Hobnob, what were, what did you do when the whole world went crazy? Before the whole world went crazy, trying, trying to run, get away from a giant rat, and uh, I fell into a pit. Someone said some shit to me and shot me. And then I woke up here. Yeah, that would be Arnie. Arnie? Yeah, he's just outside of, behind me. Wait, what did he say? He said Arnie is right behind him on the other side of this wall. Oh, okay. Well, well you tell Arnie that he's, he's kind of a rude bastard. He goes, he basically touches the side of his ear. Uh, you hear him say, hey, Arnie! This hop dog guy is calling you a bastard. A rude bastard. Got to add in rude. And he says, forgive me, a rude bastard. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah, Bob, I'd say, uh, out of most of the folks here, you've been, uh, the most, uh, 
Friendly. Lucrative. Parents bad back too. <laughs> well, I've always had a friendly nature. I proudly to detest violence. But you work for an organization that is kidnapping innocent folks at the end of the world. Yep. It's, it's borderline hypocritical, Bob. <laughs> it goes, just another Tuesday for me. Yeah. Well, actually, technically another Saturday. Yeah, I was going to enjoy my day off. Uh, you see him uh, pull out the photo, and he goes, looks like it didn't damage your photo. He folds it up and basically tosses it into you. Bob catches it. Thank you. He's going to clean up the mess, obviously. Right. He kind of pockets it. <clears throat> Guess this is about all we have to expect, huh? Whole lot of sitting around. You ever get tired of that? Hell, you ever disagree with your your employer at all, Bob? Well, shoot, no. Hmm. I used to work for the guy. I guess that understands. Checks out. He's not really a bad guy. He's just, uh, goes a little crazy every now and again. Especially when he doesn't take his meds. And, and he's prescribed to pills for mental well-being. Antipsychotics. Yep. Great. He goes, he hasn't took them in weeks. Said he was getting better, though. If you, uh, you notice a change when he's taking them pills, is he a better personality? 50-50. Great. And you see this uh, guy with the flame door is just like, he's like super boring. Bob just kind of looks over at him. What about you? You enjoy your financial stability? <laughs> looks over at Bob. <laughs> Basically, he says, as long as I can burn things, I'm perfectly 100% fine regardless of employment. Sound like a few walks, huh? Apparently, he said he was an arsonist before he joined us. <laughs> That's... Absolutely riveting. He kind of sits down in a cell on this this mound of hay. Just waits and gives himself kind of a patient expression. Yep. He'll talk to Bob here and there, just getting bits of life information and whatnot. He's more or less doing this just to butter him up, but he's also having a conversation with the guy. Uh, he's not going to give you, you know, your stuff back, obviously, but... Right, but he's still conversing with him and getting him a bit more loose. But yeah, Bob is just a very friendly guy. Other, compared to his partner, who's more violent. And more burn tendency. Mm hmm back at work and he's kind of just on and off having a conversation last fight tried to pull my punches all that business and cut off his goodbyes seeing this asteroid he goes uh well well, I was employed here, I, uh, well, my father was also a boxer. He was, huh? Yeah, nice guy. Tell us he got his legs broke. 
throw in the bed with the wrong kind of folk. No, more like he won a rigged game. Right. That he was supposed to lose. Yep. Yeah. It's all too calm. Not fun. So, imagine my surprise no, when uh, I was a kid and I, your dad's leg was cut off. Yeah. Yeah. I never knew my father. Grandfather raised me. But yeah. Uh, for right now, that's where we're going to end it. Okay. Put put in a, a little bit of an acquaintance within the ranks, which is nice. All right. So basically, the guy is just going to chat off your ear. Okay. I've been but you know until, uh, uh, until to... one of the uh, two players, either Will or Jay, uh, join us for then. And I don't think they are. So I, they might be here next week, or a right. week or two. So for right now, uh, hopefully it'll be next week when we meet up again. Okay, man. I'll see you. I'll see you around. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. I hope I get to meet the other players, man. I was, I was excited for that, but you know. Yeah. Things... Sorry about that. So I will apologize uh, on that end. Nah, it's. So I'll do my uh, usual send off. And you can go off if you want. Yeah, I'll, I'll catch you on the flip, amigo. Alright. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of content. If you like to see more, please do what you guys do. And I'll see y'all mates next time.